Welcome to Reading Under the Covers, a romance novel podcast. I'm Francesca from Under the Covers book blog, and today I have another Hot of the Presses new releases Tuesday episode to bring you the five books that I am most anticipating that release this week. And I got lots of recommendations for you guys this week. It's an amazing release week. There are more books that I could fit into this episode, and I can't wait for you guys to pick up all these amazing books. I hope that you find something that you want to pick up on this list because I'm telling you they are all amazing amazing books we had the privilege of reading these early and we cannot wait to recommend them to you guys and for you guys to read them and if you do please don't forget to let us know what you thought of them. If you want to have your pulse on what books are coming out, don't forget that you can sign up for our Substack community and you will have access to our book release database and also book trope database. So you will be able to see all of the books that we have on there that are coming out every single month so you don't miss any new releases. There are over 150 books in there for October already. And we're talking across multiple genres, all different subgenres of romance, thrillers, mysteries, cozy mysteries, all fantasy, urban fantasy, sci-fi. So we've got lots and lots of amazing reading in there that you won't miss any new book that comes out. And we are currently running a 20% off lifetime coupon on our launch as we moved our community to Substack recently and that will be running until December. And if you sign up with that discount, it will be for lifetime as long as you stay subscribed to the Substack community. It's an amazing deal. I hope you guys take advantage of that. And now let's get right to the books for this week because Again, I love them, so I can't wait for you guys to read them. We're going to start off with a bang with A Fire in the Sky by Sophie Jordan. This is a new epic fantasy or romanticy, adult romanticy, I should say. But it is my understanding that this world was originally from the Firelight series, which is a young adult fantasy series by this author, which I have not read. I have read Sophie Jordan before, but I have read more contemporary and historical. This will also be a series, so definitely lots and lots of amazing romanticy to keep up in this series. And trust me, this is a book that I'm going to be shouting about from the rooftops for quite some time. Seriously, I stayed up late two nights in a row to finish it and that's when you know it's good. So the setup for this one is that dragons are gone, witches are outcasts, and magic, it's fading. But the power struggles in the kingdom of Pantera are far from over and our main character, Tamsin, has grown up in a royal court but as kind of a servant, she's the stand-in to take punishment for the princesses, which, yes, it's basically as awful as it sounds. She's also kind of close to the captain of the guard, Stig, but things get a little wild when a brutish warrior named Fel, think Khal Drogo from Game of Thrones, comes into her life. He's come demanding the hand in marriage of one of the princesses and our heroine Tamsin as the servant that takes the punishment for the princesses is basically forced to take their place and kind of in an arranged or forced marriage plot she takes the place of one of the princesses to save them as the price that this warrior was demanding. Let's just say that that's not the biggest twist that awaits you in this book. So imagine Khal Drogo from Game of Thrones meets Daenerys in this steamy dragon-filled barbarian warrior-packed world. It's got a very medieval vibe as well. The relationship is just as intense as Game of Thrones I just I couldn't stop reading Tamsin is a strong and compelling heroine our hero Fel is deliciously brooding it's got this amazing mix of the arranged or forced marriage trope dangerous politics a bit of a love triangle but not so bad that you're gonna be put off by it and it also has dragons now it is light on the dragon element because I imagine it will be much more developed throughout the series but it's still there and I am still very excited to read more about that I will say that I figured out very early on with the bit of foreshadowing what was going to happen in the end but it didn't take away from the thrill of watching it all play out it's a solid setup for a series 
I am definitely dying to dive deeper into Jordan's world. And I think if you're a fan of dragon romantasy or fantasy romances, then Fire in the Sky by Sophie Jordan is going to be your next must read. It will grab you from the start. I'm definitely still not over it. And it's definitely an under the covers recommendation. Now the next one, let me tell you about The Most Wonderful Crime of the Year by Ali Carter, which I absolutely devoured in one sitting. It is such an easy and fun read. Now imagine Imagine if Knives Out met a cozy holiday rom-com with a touch of mystery. And that's exactly what this book delivers. I couldn't put it down. I would actually classify it as a women's fiction with a touch of romance and mystery. Light on both of those two things. The mystery, obviously, it is there. It's the central part of the story, but it's not a thrilling kind of scary mystery. It's so cozy. It's a perfect holiday rom-com if you also like a bit of a locked room mystery. The story brings together Maggie Chase, a cozy mystery writer, and Ethan Wyatt, a big time thriller author who absolutely cannot stand each other. And this is basically the classic rivals to lovers setup, but with a little bit of a twist, they both receive a cryptic invitation to a Christmas house party that is hosted by the world's most famous mystery author. Then the host vanishes from a locked room. There's a big storm that has left them without communication to the outside world as well and the duo has no choice but to put their differences aside and figure out what happened they have to race to uncover clues in this snowbound high stakes setting and the chemistry between them starts to heat up i personally love this setup and the premise of that and i love seeing these two writers find love while solving a possible murder while also staying safe themselves i'm also a sucker for the hero falls first trope and this one was really well done as we peel back all of the layers of the past between the two of them. I really loved how Ali Carter layers this story with witty banter and this fun mystery. You'll really appreciate how the investigation slowly unravels, even if the ending for me was a little more out there than we would have been able to figure out by just the usual connecting the dots between the usual suspects. I was totally right on who the villain was in this story. I just couldn't have imagined the reasoning behind it. It's a perfect mix of light romance and clever sleuthing and it's all wrapped up in the holiday season and a snowbound story so if you're in the mood for a cozy but actually quick read with a dash of mystery and romance I highly recommend that you add this one to your TBR perfect for fans of romantic comedies or fans of funny mysteries I think you're going to love this one now if you read and love A Fire in the Sky by Sophie Jordan The Wraith King by Juliet Cross it's also going to hit all the right fantasy romance notes for you. Both books blend powerful magic and rich world building and intense romance that hooks you from the first chapter. So I would venture out to say that if you love one, you'll love the other. So add both to your TBR. Now The Wraith King by Julia Cross is an epic fantasy romance that combines a richly crafted world, high stakes political intrigue, and just an irresistible love story. Also kind of a forced marriage for political reasons. The novel follows Una, who is a light fae princess whose destiny is intertwined with Goliath, the feared wraith king of the dark fae. Their world is on the brink of war and a forced marriage between them is the only way to save their kingdoms. But this isn't just a political alliance, it's just this gripping slow burn romance that will captivate you as you see them navigate treacherous fae politics, old rivalries, and also long hidden secrets, especially as it relates to the mythology of their world. They've basically been brought up believing a completely different story about what happened many, many moons ago about their origins of where the light fae came and where the dark fae came. And the light fae have been the rulers of the land and maybe it's time to turn the tables. Now, Una and Goliath's chemistry is undeniable and their growing connection threatens to change everything. Both light and dark face survival is at stake and they have to decide if they can trust each other as both lovers and partners in this war. I think if you're looking for a swoon-worthy romance that is set against a backdrop of fey magic, ancient gods, and a brewing war, definitely the Wraith Kings is going to sweep you into this gripping world. I do see it sometimes marketed as this dark 
gothic fantasy romance I don't think is quite as dark so in case you are put off by the dark label I don't think that I would consider this a dark romance it's definitely more not necessarily a light romance I just think it's darker than what I have read from Juliet Cross in the past however it's a deep emotional journey for the characters and it's paired with this epic scale of fantasy which makes it a must read for fans of romanticy and fey politics. I'm sure you're also going to fall in love with it. Next, let's switch gears and go for another genre. So let me tell you about The Trouble with Inventing a Viscount by Vivienne Lorette. This is the second book in the Liars Club series and it's such a fun ride. This is a historical romance and it has all the best tropes fake identity, grumpy hero, and of course, slow burn, and it's going to keep you hooked. Our heroine, Honoria, has been promised to the elusive Viscount Vandermeer since birth, but there is one big problem. No one knows if he even exists. So to save her family from scandal, she decides to create her own version of this mysterious man. And then we have our hero, Oscar, who is a gambler with rough around the edges charm. He finds out about Honoria's situation and decides that it's his time to play the part so he shows up pretending to be this elusive viscount. Honoria finds herself caught in this situation and she basically has to agree to follow along and play the part and as they are playing their part in this fake engagement sparks are flying between them from the get-go and we all know how those usually turn into real feelings especially as Honoria realizes that this fake viscount is exactly the man that she never knew she needed. The banter between them is witty, the chemistry is just undeniable, and I think if you love historical romances where the hero is a bit of a rogue and the heroine is no damsel in distress, then this book is going to be right up your alley. Also, while Oscar's intentions start out purely transactional, the slow realization that he's falling for Honoria is just oh so satisfying. I think Vivienne Lorette always nails that perfect balance of humor, romance, and spice. In fact, she's one of my go-to authors when I want a historical romantic comedy. So definitely add this one to your list if you're into historical romances and if you want to see a scheming, sharp-tongued heroine and a rogue hero who is more than he seems. And then for my last one, let's talk about The Darkest Waltz by Ashley R. K. It's a gothic romance that's going to hook you in and just not let go. Imagine if Peaky Blinders had a secret love affair with Rebecca and you've got the vibe for the book. It's all set in the 1920s, so think speakeasies, bootleggers, and all the vintage glamour that is so lush, but with a dark and twisted undertone that makes you feel like anything could happen, and trust me, it will. Our heroine Evangeline Ward is not your typical damsel in distress. She's the freaking queen of the bootleggers, and she's running her empire in Georgia. Total boss babe, but just as she's crushing it in her illegal business, a rival steps in to ruin everything, and her alcohol stash is in jeopardy. Then we have the hero Weston Abernathy, who's a man who's got his own problems. He needs a wife to secure his family's inheritance and the Abernathy Railroad. And guess who fits the bill perfectly? Yep, our heroine Evangeline. But what's in it for her, you ask? Well, the secluded island that is his house is a perfect place for her to hide her stash. But don't get too cozy thinking that this is just a marriage of convenience, although we love that trope. As they move to this remote island estate to kick off their fake marriage, basically, that's where the real drama starts. Think cursed families, a creepy mansion, and visions that make Evangeline question her grip on reality. The Abernathy family has secrets like skeletons in the closet kind of secrets and Evangeline is about to get swept into all of that while also dealing with her growing feelings for Weston. Let's just say this is a slow burn romance that it's going to sizzle while this mystery unravels. So if you're into dark haunting love stories with that gothic edge, especially this time of year, perfect for fall, then The Darkest Waltz is for you. It's perfect for anyone who wants a blend of romance, mystery, and 
the right amount of spooky atmosphere that's going to keep you turning the pages way past your bedtime. And those are the five books that I wanted to highlight here for you guys today. Like I said before, these are all under the covers recommendations. I can't wait for you guys to read them. There's a little bit of everything. So hopefully you found something on this list. You can get many, many more books inside of our book release database. This week is packed full of amazing book releases. I can't even tell you. So take advantage of that 20% coupon that is running and you can join and have access to that book release database. You can simply go to underthecoverscommunity.com for that, but I will also leave a direct link to that coupon in the show notes down below. As always, don't forget that you can find all of our book recommendations on the blog at undercoversbookblog.com. Sign up for our newsletter there so you will be notified every single Sunday of all of the bookish content that we have for you guys for the week. You can also find us on social at UTC Book Blog on Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, Pinterest, X or Twitter and under the covers book blog on Facebook and YouTube and join us live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our Novel Nights bookish live show. This coming week, Thursday the 26th, we're going to be talking bookish tea. So we've got all of the bookish gossip to chat with you guys about. And that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you added these books to your TBR and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.